The Wedding Gift is Marlon Suyapa Baden's debut historical novel. Set in Alabama in 1852, the story follows affluent white plantation heir Clarissa Allen and her enslaved, mixed-race, half-sister Sarah Campbell. Told through the alternating perspectives of Sarah and Clarissa's mother, Theodora, the novel explores powerful themes of antebellum slavery, racism, identity, misogyny, independence, rebellion, unrequited love, and how these interlocking qualities informed American life in the 19th century South. Based on a real-life court case from the 1840s in Talladega, Alabama, The Wedding Gift has been called a stunning debut by Publishers Weekly, as well as an inspiring read for historical fiction fans by Booklist. Set on Allen Estates, a large Alabama cotton farm, the story begins before the Civil War in 1852. Sarah Campbell, a mulatto slave, is the illegitimate daughter of abusive, alcoholic plantation owner Cornelius Allen. Sarah's house slave mother, Emmeline, only consented to bed Cornelius in order to keep her children at the plantation. Still, Cornelius forces Emmeline to remain his mistress housekeeper for years, against her wishes. Shortly after the birth of Sarah, her white, half-sister Clarissa is born, though their sisterhood is kept a secret from Clarissa. The story unfolds through the first-person narratives of both Sarah and Clarissa's mother, Theodora Allen. As the chapters jump back and forth between voices and viewpoints, between the past and present, lasting bonds are formed between the two sisters, as well as between Sarah and Theodora. Sarah and Clarissa find they share a similar spirit of rebellious independence, while Sarah and Theodora both suffer a life of isolation, oppression, and misogyny. As the two sisters come of age and approach the time of marriage, Clarissa is courted by a plethora of rich, landowning suitors from all across the South. One such suitor, a wicked rival plantation owner named Cromwell, becomes the frontrunner to wed Clarissa when Cornelius insists on it. Cornelius only favors Cromwell due to his secretive investment in illegal slave ships, which could help the Allen business profit handsomely. Clarissa does not love Cromwell, and instead dailies with a number of suitors until she falls for two different men at the same time, unbeknownst to her family as well as the two men. Sarah has no such romantic fortunes. She understands that her life is diametrically opposed to that of her white, spoiled rotten half-sister and is at peace with it. Sarah actually favors a meager existence, as it helps keep her nimble and unburdened to mount an escape. Sarah thinks a big family with lots of children to look after would make it too cumbersome for her to successfully run away. Despite her unromantic view of marriage, Sarah eventually meets and marries a fellow slave named Isaac. When Sarah has an unexpected pregnancy and miscarriage, she feels a sense of guilt-ridden relief. Isaac is inconsolable. In recounting the time she was Sarah's age, Theodora reveals that her ostensible life of privilege wasn't so beneficial after all. Due to her domineering husband and legislation that denied civil rights to women, Theodora was forced to ignore her intellectual side and dash her own dreams of becoming a writer. Living as a white woman and the wife of a wealthy plantation owner comes with perks Sarah will never know, but through her recollections, Theodora sheds light on the suffering she has in common with her daughter's half-sister. Like Sarah, Theodora is reduced to a piece of property. Cornelius's cruel and violently abusive treatment of his wife causes a rift in their marriage. Theodora's desire to escape for another life leads her to have an affair with a nearby poet. Theodora grows close to Sarah by secretly teaching her how to read and write, and by looking after her when she played with Clarissa as a child. Theodora's subjugation to a dominant all-male society also allows her to empathize with Sarah's enslavement. Although Clarissa falls in love with a young man from Montgomery, she unpredictably comes around to marrying Cromwell in the end. As a present for their marriage, Cornelius gives Sarah to Clarissa to be her personal housemaid in their new matrimonial abode. While Cornelius and Theodora consider this an honorable gesture, Sarah does not. Rather, Sarah finds her long-held plans of escape are made all the more difficult. However, 
When recalling the brutal atrocities inflicted on her older sister Belle, Sarah cannot sit idly by. When Emmeline finally stops sleeping with Cornelius, the master sells Belle off to a nearby slave owner. When the ever-rebellious Clarissa reveals she has been impregnated by a man other than Cromwell, the melodrama escalates. Through financial bribes, Cromwell agrees to claim the baby as his own. Yet, when the baby is born prematurely, Cromwell cannot bear to lend his namesake to the child. Clarissa is sent home in shame. When she returns, Cornelius takes the baby away from her. Not long after, Clarissa dies of childbed fever. Cornelius, aware that his prestigious legacy has been sullied throughout the South, succumbs to a lethal dose of alcohol. All the while, as Cromwell schemes to keep Sarah as his personal concubine, she continues to plot her escape. Sarah is able to blend in with the educated masses, thanks to the literacy she acquired from the secret tutelage of Clarissa and Theodora. The novel ends with Sarah, disguised as a man, freely making her way toward the port of Mobile, averting slave catchers along the way. Dr. Marlon Suyapa Baden is an attorney at the Legal Aid Society in New York City, America's largest and oldest law firm for the poor. The Wedding Gift is her first novel. HTTPS www. Reading Group Guides. Com Reviews The Wedding Gifts www. Kirkus Reviews. Com Book Reviews Marlon Suyapa Baden Wedding Gift HTTPS www. Amazon. Com Wedding Gift Marlon Suyapa Baden DP 12500290023. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.